the batting line. I said batting one. Let's yeah, start in one. Yeah. Let's go to nine. Yes. Let's fantastic. Yeah, let's re fantastic. I like the way you're thinking. So, in this version, I'm going to bring it up to you just to show to you. I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you. Okay, that's Matthew chapter 9, okay? I'm going to go to the CEV version. I'm not familiar with the CEV version. Well, it's very well, it's very, uh, well um, attested and attributed by Christian scholarship. I've heard of the um, Christian Standard Bible, SCSB. Yeah, there are many versions. English Standard Version. I'm not from across the This is very well known, and I'll show, and I'll show it to you as well. Right, what we're going to do now, we're going to have a little examination of this. Let it load up, it's going to take a few seconds to load up. Yeah. We've travelled we've traveled from London, yeah. so um, it's going to probably just like, but this is going to shock you to your core. All we're going to do, um, well, let's just give it an opportunity. If it doesn't shock you, that's, uh, f uh, at, your own, that's at your own volition. But just give me a few seconds, like I said, the phone is probably a bit hot from our um, uh, travel. But I want to show you something which will show you this particular so this understanding. Is Matthew 9. This is Matthew chapter 9. The, the one about uh, who shall believe God only. So just give me two seconds because my phone for some peculiar reason seems to have frozen. Um, brother, can I use your phone for a minute please? Can you do me a favour? Can you go into Google and type in Matthew chapter 9 please for me? CEV. Because my, for some reason my phone seems to have frozen. Let me turn it off and try it on again. Yeah, Matthew chapter 9, CEV. All you've got to type in, Matthew 9, CEV. Meantime, I'll just close this and turn it on again. Yeah. By claiming to be God. So in the CEV version, but notice Christ's response, my friend. Martin, listen, you're an Englishman. I'm listening. Okay, you're an Englishman. I'm not an Englishman, but I've been born and brought up here. So I will tell you the following. This is basic English grammar and semantics. There's no way to misconstrue what the verse is saying. So let's address this singularly so that you are certain as to what I am saying and what you are saying. And we're not going to be confused at, at, at the end of this conversation. Brother, have you been able to do I think we've had a long travel. I don't know what's happened. Anyway. We're gonna, we're gonna. Thank you so much. Sorry, we've travelled from London for some reason. Our phone seemed to be a bit temperamental. So we're talking. Yeah. So what I'd like you to do is to go to Google and type in Matthew nine C E V. That's the contemporary English version. Matthew nine. Yeah, yeah. Matthew chapter nine C E V. If you type in C E V as well, please. Meantime, I've turned the phone off and on again with the expectation that it should hopefully um, resonate. Okay, I'm hopeful. Okay, we're in. That did, that, did, that did the job. This is, this is very loose English. Here we are. Okay, let's just use this. This is a. Okay, this is fine. I've got it here as well. Here you are. Matthew chapter 9, contemporary English version. Yep. Yeah. It's so, very contemporary, isn't it? it doesn't, it's not very close to the original. Anyway, let's just get here. There's nothing in the original that says think. Well, let's just address this one over here. It's, it's not okay. good English. But it really is very poor translation. Okay, sure. So, this, so man, that's... this man blasphemes is the original. Yes. This man, Jesus, must think he's got. It's, it's just. Must think that, he's got. It's, no, can we, okay. no, that is bad translation. Sorry, right. that is bad translation. Okay, but what we'll do then to make things easy for you, whilst, after we've gone through this verse in English, we'll go to the biblehub.net with the Greek interlinear, which is yeah. the direct translation. Okay, would you like that? Okay, let's just do this then. Okay, let's just do this first of all very briefly, then we'll do as I've made mention. Okay, here we are. So Jesus got into a boat and crossed back over to the town where he lived. I'm in front of him. Got it. Okay, some people soon brought to him a man lying on a mat because he could not walk. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, he said to the man, My friend, don't worry, your sins are forgiven. Some of the teachers, some of the. He did not say, don't worry. See, but this is a very poor translation. He said, fear what? not. He didn't say, don't worry. Well, same thing, fear not, don't worry. What's the major difference between fear not and don't worry? Let's read, let's read what it says in the thing here. 
Matthew 9. But can we, can we just at least do, because we seem to be going off on a slight tangent. All I want to do is address it, then you can do that. Is that fair? I'll, I'll literally be a few seconds. Let me just finish this pop, then you can make your counterpoint. And I'll, I'll, and I'll attentively listen to you. Okay, so it's not too bad. Okay, can we just quickly address this so I can get to the point that I already want you to address. So here you are. So, so when Jesus got into a boat and crossed back over to the town where he lived, some people soon brought to him a man lying on a mat because he could not walk. When Jesus saw how much faith they had, please check, check this text out. He said to the man, my friend, don't worry, your sins are forgiven. Some teachers of the law of Moses said to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. What does Jesus reply to that point? He responds, Jesus knew what was in their minds and he said, why are you thinking such evil things? So the thought that Jesus is thinking to himself as being God is an evil thought. This is basic English grammar. No, it is, well, it is because the question he says, why this man is blaspheming? And that was the evil. The evil was that they thought he was blaspheming. He wasn't blaspheming. For claiming to be God. So blaspheming no, would be claiming to be God. The word is just blasphemes. In the original, it's just blasphemy. Yes. And that, why, okay, what would entail blasphemy in that case? If he's able to forgive sins, and you said earlier, only God can forgive sins, therefore this kind of translation is correct because he's blasphemed, because only God can forgive sins, hence he must think he is God. That's plain logic, the, plain simple. The evil was that they should charge him with blasphemy. The evil was not what he said. No, but what would that blasphemy entail? That blasphemy would entail that he's done an act only befitting to God, hence he's claiming to be God. This is which is why the, no, to, to make no, things. No, not, not that. The evil okay, so what's the blasphemy? I would like to ask you, what's the blasphemy? Blasphemy is using God's name in a wrong way. No. Blasphemy is swearing. If you use God's name as a swearing and said OMG, uh, for example, that would be using God's name in a right way. Now, they were saying he was using God's name in a wrong way because, yes. But, but, but there's no mention of that. In, if, your, if your point, Martin, is correct, then that would have stated that within that within the first few verses by stating that he's used the name of God incorrectly. However, what, what we've observed, is, what we've observed, the, the, the CEV is not very accurate. No, but you know, very loose. so what I would very say, loose. Martin. So in response to that point, all we have to address is when, as you said earlier, he he forgave sins. Only God for, can forgive sins. Hence, he must be God. To which the thought of that is what Christ reads their mind and hence says to them, why are you thinking such evil things? No, Meaning no. that th that is what he's saying, uh, Martin. Okay, so what you're saying, the scholars, the scholars have got it wrong. No, I'm saying the blasphemy, what they thought he was blaspheming. Because he, th because because he claimed to be they, God. They didn't know he was God. He was God and because he didn't know Sorry, that, say that last they, bit they again. Were, say that were, last bit again. Look. Yeah. They thought forgiving sins was for God only. Brilliant. Okay. okay. God only. Right. He forgave sins. Yep. So indication was either he was God or two. So that's was, okay. Or 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 it's, I don't know. So listen, some, but some other strange. Martin, you're saying you don't know, but the, let the text no, speak to you. The no, text is, that, that text you said in... Sorry, you, it's a bad translation. Okay, but even, okay, just say it's a bad translation. But this, the, notice the last point you made. You said it's either one of two explanations. If the first explanation is that only God can forgive sins, then hence by proxy, he's been accused of blasphemy because he's claiming to be God, because only God can give, forgive sins. My evil thoughts weren't that he was God. Weren't that he was God. What are you saying? Their evil thoughts were, or he, he was having evil thoughts. Is that what you're trying to say? That he was having evil thoughts thinking he was God? So what is he's trying... your implication? No, what I'm saying to you is that because he forgave the sins, amongst them they're thinking that Jesus must think he is God by, by making this action of forgiving and hence he reads their thought that they're thinking he must think he's God because he's blasphemed and to that response he says why do you think such evil things so you think the evil thoughts is that they're thinking that he thinks he's God no that's, that's 
Yeah, but if that was the case and they've understood him to make this blasphemous statement, hence he must have been for God because only God can forgive sins. That's why they, Martin. Why did that, he forgive sins? How could he? He did forgive his sins. Ma, okay. In John what chapter 20, okay. I think we seem to be going in circles. In John chapter 20, verse 23, the disciples, they forgive sins as well. Does that mean they're God? No, they're given the right. You, they're given the authority. If you, no, not to forgive sins, yeah. but, if, uh, but, but to declare that these sins are forgiven. But let's, let's go on to something more clear. Because there's much clearer. Thomas. In John 20, 20, 28. Yes. I know what you're going to say even before you say it. My Lord. God, can I address that if you want me to? Give me a first. Let me let me finish saying speaking first, okay? And then just try to understand what I'm saying. Absorb the information in. If at the end of my explanation it doesn't make sense, then please come back. But give me a chance to explain this. How kuriosmu? How kuriosmu? That's the Greek of John chapter 20 verse 28. It says. Let me just give you some historical context and I'll, and be patient enough just to hear me out. In the original, the earliest fragments of the p66 document of this particular verse john chapter 20 verse 28 there is a lacuna a lacuna is a technical definition which means there's a space within the p66 of john 20 28 the term my god is not there number one the only term my lord is lord is a title given for in the in the in the bible the term kurios is given for people of high disposition it's also given to god as well similar to the greek word theos yeah, which is yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is also given to people of a high disposition, but it's also given to God. Curious, now, curious in the Septuagint is very, very most frequently used of God. Fantastic. Okay, so good. But what I'm trying to say to you, these are interchange. They were given to common people, but they're also given to God. Similar with the word theos. Same same principle applies. Let's go to P44 then. P66. Yeah. So basically speaking. How many other? So there's only so. How many other documents? Manuscripts have that so, the, so in the earliest Greek go. manuscripts of the no, Cold. Don't, 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 don't go on that. Why shouldn't I go to the earliest? Doesn't that make sense? No, I'm saying earliest is not necessarily best. Why? We go on the majority of texts. What's the majority, sir? What did the translations say? Is that the KJV? The new King James. New King James, which is yeah. nearly an offset of the KJV. Yeah. So your but so those exactly texts go to the Codex Receptus, no, okay, which is the 10th century no. um, can manuscripts. I say, can I just say that in the bottom, where there are differences, it points them out. The new text so what you are saying is there are differences in the manuscripts. Yeah, but quite small. No, but this, this that seems pretty. The but no, but there isn't in there. But that seems quite significant to me no, that it, we have to just one document is not enough. In the codex, you never. Even, For example, sorry. If it was, if it was true, why is it not referenced here? Look? He says, "My look, there's no, there's no reference at the base here that says P66 says this." Yeah, but that's because it's not in there, is it? But what I'm telling you, that's the original Greek. Any differences from there are two texts: There's the Nestle translation. Nestle yes, Nestle. I'm aware of that. The Greek Nestle translation, yeah. And, and then there's the majority text, which gives the majority reading of all the manuscripts. Okay? Mm -hmm. two, two traditions. Well, they to Can I? Neither, yeah. neither mention. Neither mention. Neither mention um, what? But this is a historical fact. This is not something I'm. Yeah, but that's the earliest fragmented documentation of P of, of the P66 of John 2028. 20, no, I haven't. You're just not giving me a chance to elaborate further. Remember, I said this is my initial response, I'm, and I'm going to elaborate much further as well to you. But you're never going to give me a chance. It's my Lord and my God. What is it now? Right. So now, so let's address the point. So. So which bit is missing? My God, it's not there. And the codex and the codex Synacticus in the original first um, editing of it, it wasn't in there either. But it was added later in, in a revised edition in the fifth century. I know I've, I've read that. Why is it not again on my reference? I don't know why it's not. That's it because the KJV follows later manuscripts, which has been inter like for example. Can I give you an example, please? Like in 1 John 5, 7, it says there are three that bear witness in the heavens. 
don't believe us because there was, they were only occurring five, four or five very late manuscripts. So late manuscripts, which yeah. were an interpolation. Well, and I can prove I to you historically. I don't believe those, so what I'm saying is I agree with you. That is an interpolation which doesn't prove the truth. Oh, well, thanks for accepting that. Fantastic. I appreciate your sincerity. In He's not being video, I'm being video, singularly. Well, what they generally try to do is edit the videos, edit, edit, edit out, edit out. Well, I'm sure, well, what we do then, what we do when you, before we finish this conversation. So what we do, so Martin, Martin, I'm sure you're an intelligent person to, I'll leave it to you. Can I finish? Oh my God! You made an assumption already without even having evidence of what you were thinking. Are oh, no, we doing? No, no, I'm not questioning your integrity. Yes. I question the fact well, there's no my basis wisdom. for him to put his trust in. I thought, I so what I'm saying to you, Martin, then will be able to recollect our conversation. He's an intelligent man, and then he can see whether anything has been edited uh, or not. If someone said, "Can I borrow a thousand pounds? I'll bring it back in ten minutes. Would you do it?" That's no, not the same. No, that's no, not analogous no, to the situation. No, the situation here is clear. M myself this, and Martin. Have no, been we, yeah. I was happy before this. this it, you're not being later. filmed. You're not. You're not in the film. And plus, and plus, Martin, listen to me. Listen to me, my friend. I've given you my word. That's not. You're not going to be in the pic. I've given you my word. Okay. Listen to me. Doesn't matter if, I, if we disagree on what we're speaking about. I've given you my word. You will not be on the from film. All you, all you, anything that I said. Yes. No, you be else. you'll be able to be heard, but you they won't see your face. Well, you'll have to tell. Shall I prove it to you? Shall I prove it to you? I can show you many. I can show you. I'd rather stop it because. Okay. Okay. That's, but that's because our friend came. Let me continue then, because our friend came in. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Speak whilst he's speaking? Okay. It may not be true. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. We're looking at that, my Lord and my God, and all they're saying is. I haven't. Well, I haven't finished. I haven't even finished the other points I wanted to make. That's enough for me. But because I need to build up a case of evidence. For example, if you if you went to a court. And I've got to build up a case of evidence against you. I'm not going to stick to a singular thing if I've got many evidences. But you're not giving me a chance even to elaborate on the further evidences. Right. Okay, with due respect. I'm just speaking passionately. This is not, I mean, just so that we could be heard. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Martin. And like I said, it's my word to you. You will not be, and I'll give you the name of the channel. Why are you? Because if you're on you, it, yeah. Then by implication, I'm on it as well. No, what because it you're means. Not talking to blank, blankly. To okay, but you made a request that you do not want to be on the film, so hence we have to honour your request. And what you will be, you will be blurred out. If you don't believe me, I can show you the very yeah, videos. It's not my person. You'll yeah. have my name. You'll have everything I've said. Yeah, but I can't see your face. What's the point? There are millions of people. Well, you've got my name. Well, you, there are many, many Martins. Are you the only Martin on, on the planet? Come on, Martin. Come on, man. My name is Mustafa, by the way. I come from East London. Yeah. Okay, I'm telling you where I'm, where I'm from. You, and I don't know where you live, where I contact you. But I didn't you. ask you, where, all, I, all I asked was, I gave you my name, you gave me your name, and that was it. And you'll be blurred out. Now, Martin, come on, this is getting a bit pedantic. I want to have a nice conversation with you. You're a gentleman, okay? okay well, I'm what other evidence is okay, my thank you. doesn't exist? What about my Lord, anyway? Okay, my Lord is in there, but my Lord is commonly referred to even Abraham in the book of Genesis, when Sarah refers to him as my Lord. It's just a title, and it's replete in Mark's Gospel as well, where Christ is referred to as the master of the house. But all it means... The majority of the time, in the Septuagint, my Lord refers to God. Not every time, Yes. in this time, there's no... Why would it be anybody else because, than my Lord? Because in... Uh, uh, Jesus is Lord Right, shall I come? Can, if you give me an opportunity, like I said, give me a chance. It may, be, it may be that you have to attentively listen to me. However, I'm satisfied that I will be able to give you reasonably uh, coherent answers to your. But it's a matter of patience. I can't just wrap it up in five seconds flat, and that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate your sincerity. Second, right, so the second point, in addition to this particular point about the lacuna, not in the earliest manuscripts, I mean, sorry, not in the earliest document. And then I made mention of the Codex Sinaiticus, it's not in the first rendering, it's an addition into the Codex Sinaiticus. Sinaitic, I beg your pardon, yeah. Some people think it's actually. Do you know why the. Let me ask you a quick. Have you ever read. Um, Anyway, yeah. so can I ask you a quick question? Do you know why all these other versions in the early part of the 20th century came out as opposed to the singular KJV version? And normally the NIV, the no, ES. No, exactly. Do you know the reason why? Because it's because it's precisely. Given, yes. The oldest extant manuscripts. The oldest ones were given priority. Which makes sense. Earliest, the earlier the better. It could have been 
Yeah. Why? It could have been a, a document that survived. Uh, yes. Because it was false. And nobody bothered to preserve it or copy it. They left it rot in the waste paper basket or wherever it was and, and left it. Well, I don't think so it, I don't so think hence it, it can't be authenticated. Like Whereas these documents, they are authenticated. Yeah, now, what you. Yeah. Okay, let's just carry on with, with this John 2028. 20, so, the term, um, my, God, my Lord and my God, it's a term also used in John chapter 10, verse 33, where Christ says, Is it not written in your scriptures that you are gods? The same Greek word theos. Which you find in this later manuscript. Which... Do you know what that means? Yes, a god. No, it means, it means judges. Yes. If you look in the context, yes, judges and powerful human. But what they are referred to, Martin, are as gods. So these people who are referred to as gods are, as, as you correctly yeah, said, judges. with a little L. Yes, Why do but, you keep from rolling your eyes? no, because no, I'm not rolling. I'm Every just. Time I answer, you roll your eyes. I'm not rolling my eyes in the sense of disrespect. I'm just. All the I don't want to do it. I just want to make my because you've asked me to build a case, and then what you can do, just know what I've said. But and I'm not going to go on forever. And I, it's just, we're just discussing you, one verse. Just, just and all I want to do is. In this conversation. Yes. Hey, you did the same one. You put your head down. 90% of the talking is coming from you. Okay, because you've asked me a question in relation to John 20, 28. Well, it's incomplete. But, uh, but we've been interrupted, interrupted so far by your friend, and you've, you've been able to then interject when I've explained to you the definitions of lacuna. You've interrupted. We've, you haven't done it deliberately, but you've done it in the sense that you're keen to put your point of view. But it makes more sense for the sake of progressive conversation that you let me make my little case, and then you can respond to those points, and I'll keep silent at that juncture. Okay, so going back to John 20, 28. So the term, my, my Lord, my Lord and my God, this distinct, this even distinguished in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, Paul distinguishes it. Yeah. See, if you just take my word for one, then you can check the references after as well. I'm not, I'm not making... Okay. All right. Let's just do it. Okay, let's go at that slow pace you want to. So what's that? That's distinguishing between God as the only true God and Jesus Christ as being Lord. Because what Paul did, he broke up the Shema from, from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Okay, so by him breaking that up, he's attributed the title of God being the Father alone and Jesus being the Lord, which was his understanding of an elevation of Christ's character, but still separating him from God the, um, through, you know, the, the originator of all things. Because according to even your own belief, Christ does not have that singular attribute of our say our say means he does he's not self-dependent which only god is okay, so let so me get to the no, point no, 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 you've got your point. I've got it right okay there is one god the father yes yep. there's one who is god the father yes and there's one lord jesus christ yes so what I, so what i'm going to say to that is paul is actually distinguishing but he doesn't note what he doesn't say here martin he doesn't say as you've assumed it. he doesn't say right there is one god who is the father and there's one Lord who is Jesus Christ, which is, and there's one Lord or one um, Holy Spirit, which is also God. That is you reading into it. But what he's saying, let me just finish my point here. So what he's actually saying here, he's distinguishing between God, and we've already explained that Lord can also carry the title for one is of a high disposition. So Christ in this pretext would be given that, let me just finish my point and then you can come in because it's very keen and I'll keep silent. So it's very apparent that he's distinguishing between the terms. Even why is, okay, let me ask you a question. Why is Abraham referred to as a Lord to Sarah? Why is Abraham, in the book of Genesis, why does, refer, why does Sarah refer to him as my Lord? Or in Mark's Gospel, where it says he will be the Lord of the house. So what I've showed to you, you know what I've tried to show to you? Okay, so what it shows is of a person... Obviously a human like would be called Lord as in the sense of... So that is in that text, Christ is the same. No, and why have I ref... No, 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 no. no. See, that, that's your, your, your thing. Just because, just because Lord is used of, by Sarah and Abraham doesn't mean to say exactly the same as true. Not at all. No, but what I'm saying... Lord is often used of Jesus as the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, which means one who is... Because even Paul... No, 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 not somebody who's just no better than Abraham. 
this is somebody who's high overall. But that's your because you've assumed that no, by saying the Trinity is in that verse. Why did I bring up 1 Corinthians 8 6 in reference to John chapter 20, verse 28? Um, was to show to you the distinguishing factor. So when Christ makes, when Thomas makes that exclamation, it's like giving reverence to Jesus but also thanking God. Just like in Matthew chapter 9, verses 3 onwards, where it says that the, that the people praised God for giving such authority to men. No, but it's. Oh my God! But, no, um, that's not lots of lots of lots of people have understood it in that yes, way as well. Yeah. Not just Unitarians, but lots of other people, yeah, Christian people scholars. Want to knock the Trinity. We'll do that. I understand that. Uh, there is a there is a, in fact there's a Trinitarian Trinitarian scholar Bullard. He's made the same point as well in regards to this. He's not a liberal. He's a Trinitarian scholar. He made a liberal Trinitarian. No, he doesn't have to. Uh, but he's not. He's not. He is a. Um, etymological exegete of the text of the Greek. So he can't be a liberal. I, this is nothing to do with scholarship. If, in if I look in my, all the versions I've got, all the translations I've got, all the common, commentaries I've got, none of them take that view. They all, I, I've now seen the Unitarian translation dated before, or oh, so 18, uh, 18, somewhere, 1815, uh, and they were the first to propose that. Uh, but, no, but can I ask you, why is the Satan referred to as God in the Bible? These were common... God of this world. Right? Yes, so why, but why use the term God of... God. But, why, but why doesn't it say false God there? Why does it use the term he's the God of this world? Because you know why? These were, these were fluid terms used commonly for people of a high disposition. The term God would be used for, when, because, it, because Christ lived in a Greco-Roman world, a Hellenistic world, in which they could not understand the concept of an unseen God. So what... I, I get all you're saying, you're yeah. trying to knock down okay, that's verses fine. that can be by evangelical scholars. Like who? Can you name me one, yeah. please? Well, uh, John Gill, Robert Hodge, who? Hendrickson. You, you probably don't know I'm, I'm aware of a lot of Christian scholarship. I am aware of Can you name me? Does F.F. F. Bruce say that? Does F.F. F. Bruce say that? I don't know F.F. F. Bruce. I does, um, okay, does, 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 commentary on no, Okay, does Bruce Metzger say that? He's very well not top. Textual critic in the world. Um, he doesn't say that either. Metzger's not reliable. I think he's probably a little bit like a I don't know. Anyway. There are lots of liberal scholars, the commentaries that I read. Metzger is not a liberal scholar. Evangelical scholars would not take that line. It's clearly because you're coming from Allah. No, no, no. I know, you know what, you know what, what language he just spoke. You don't believe in the Trinity, but Martin, you know. Martin, that's fine, Martin. You're at liberty to believe whatever you like, my friend. You, you just asked universe. about the term. Oh, look, let me familiarise yourself with something. Are you aware of what language Jesus spoke colloquially? You're being very condescending. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just asking you a question. I know he was probably Aramaic, possibly Hebrew as well. Aramaic. Look, on the cross it said. Those were the no. Okay. Those were the no, that's not what I've asked you, Martin. I'm asking, I asked you what language did Jesus speak? We think it was probably Aramaic. Okay, and did you know the name for God in Aramaic is the term Allah? Well, you know those things because... But that's not me making it up. Muslims have an Arabic Quran, obviously. So no, but this is Aramaic, not Arabic. Okay, but it's closer than Greek, but it's So, what's your point? So what my point is, you early, you just said a few moments ago, oh, you believe in Allah as, it's, as if it's some distinct and remote entity with the only Muslims worship. But I've shown to you the term Allah is, but you said it in that manner which suggests you believe in Allah, which is what you do not believe in, which is therefore excludes him. But what I'm saying to you, the word for God in, in Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke, is Allah. In Arabic it's Allah, in Hebrew it's Ilah, the, the cognate. Exactly. Thank you, I appreciate that. And I'm not trying to be, I'm not, I'm, you're elder than me, I have to respect you. Just that, you know, I like to make my point a bit uh, with passion, but with giving you utter reverence because you're, you know, you're an elderly person and I have to give you that respect which you are due. It's just I want to make sure that you understand my points. And please, I mean, when it's your turn to speak, I don't want to interject, I just want to. But it's facing me and we blur the videos. Okay. Well, can I show you something to satisfy you? I know it will be used 
against me. It won't be used against And I'll prove it if you give me one moment. Again, just give me a few moments. Check this out. We frequently have people who make this um, request, please do not put us on. So what we then do is we blur the individual out. And it's not the yeah. person, it's what I've said. But you're not going to be seen, uh, my friend. Well, so why should it be of concern? I don't want it. Okay. I'd rather just delete it. Okay, okay, let's check this. Let me just show you. Hopefully this will work. It's not fair. But Martin, you're not being seen, my friend. Why, why should you be concerned? It's not my visual appearance. It's what I said that Martin Okay, fair enough. Okay, let's just continue with what... winding up. There is not... I'm just trying to have a conversation with you. And we've always spoken about is a few things. Why I don't believe Jesus is God. I want to speak about other things. But I want you to speak as well. So you feel that this is not a one-way thing. Now, no more okay. Okay. Do you want to bring anything, Martin, that you feel is evidence of Jesus being God, please? Where he himself makes that claim. I would like to hear okay. that. And please don't be put off by my voice. It's just, I've traveled from far, you know, we haven't eaten or drank any, anything since uh, having early morning, uh, not even breakfast, I don't think I've had this morning, yeah, to be honest. The beginning was the Word, you know this, and the Word was with God. And the Word was oh, God, yes, John 1.1. 1, 1. He was in the beginning, with God the beginning, is in the time of creation. All things were made through, through him. him, and without him, nothing was made. He created all things. It was before this world was. In him was life. Life was the light of man. That's, I, know, I know what people say is a God, but that's bad English. Not bad sort of bad Greek. Bad Greek. The, the, the proper understanding of it is he is God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. He wasn't some superior being, created being. Look at um, Colossians 2. The Greek word is icon. Yep, sorry. Yep. He is the firstborn over all creation. For by him are all things created. He can't be a created being because it says by him all things were created. So he's not a created being. But it says but firstborn. Says he's the firstborn. That is somebody with the power and authority and everything from the Father. He has the same substance as the Father. The firstborn was always the one who inherited everything. So, it doesn't mean so that means he wasn't eternal then? It doesn't mean, no, no, it doesn't mean he was created being. Because how could he be created? Because it says, by him all things were created. How could he yeah, but not. All things, he can't create himself. Show me that verse. Verse 16. For by him all things were created. Yes, but he was. Can't, that can't include himself. No, but the Greek word there is, is like, it's a character. Character literally means through whom God made the, the world because it says in the uh, Gospel of Mark that um, it was God who made Adam and Eve in the beginning. It wasn't him who made by that. Him. Yes, by him in the same. Yes, but what it's saying is that God is the one who makes Jesus as the firstborn. No, but that's no, what it says in 1 Corinthians. What's what? the, how can he be making himself? He but, makes all things and he's created. No, but he, he must be making himself. That doesn't make sense. So I'll explain that. So God uses Christ as a conduit of for creation. That's what it means. Because, but hence, being firstborn, uh, because the Christian, well, look I, the, the word firstborn I know, and see what it means. Firstborn being some with all power and authority. Somebody who has equal power. Who's been given authority? It's not by his by default. Look, it's not a created being. But it says firstborn. Firstborn doesn't mean that. Look up firstborn. In Matthew chapter one, verses eighteen and fourteen and one, the the, the, the term there used is being created it's in the greek it was and i can show it to you as well if you want me to matthew chapter 1 verse 1 matthew chapter 1 verse 14 18 the term there is used as being created Jesus came into existence his body, yes, his body. yes he came yes physical body. yes he came created physical body, yes. yes that's right but he, had, was, he was god with us god with men yeah so he, he can't just you can't create god God is in existence no, but, all time. but from that passage you've read, my friend, in 1 Colossians 15, Colossians all, 1. yeah, 1 Colossians he verse 15. All no, but it's by it's by him all things are by meaning 
he is the conduit or in a, an, all things no, all but, created things yes but, but it all, him, all all things yeah but and if he's created being if he's a created being which is what you're saying yes he created himself but the implication but, he can't create himself so it's okay. a nonsense to believe okay, the firstborn I, means the first what does firstborn by a proxy mean that means you're the firstborn of you're not, that means you're you are a created being if i'm firstborn of my family which is how you're supposed to take it. Literal first born doesn't always mean that. It means authority and power. I think we better leave it. Oh, that's a shame. Should we just. Okay. SubhanAllah. So, uh, just to conclude on the matter, having spoken to Martin, there was a bit of a tough job uh, speaking to him, as you can probably imagine. Nice elderly chap, but when we examined their texts and tried to have a reasonable conversation, they seem to suggest as if we are the ones who are being a bit too. Um, forceful in our understanding when we're not. All we're trying to give them an understanding of these verses that they come and bring up as evidence of Christ claiming to be God. In fact, it proves to the contrary. And I, was, I thought I was being very respectful to him in, on every occasion, simply trying to address these points which he had an issue with. And we got interjected on a couple of occasions, but as we saw, the conversation went smoothly. At the end, he tried to claim that Jesus is um, not created, but the very passage he brought out from 1 Colossians 15 shows, in fact, that he was the firstborn. And what does firstborn mean by definition? That he was not eternal, he came into existence. So hence, he then I was trying to then show to him that in Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 and Matthew chapter 1 verse 18, he comes into existence, he's created. So he's created at a particular singular point. So, you know, may Allah guide these people to understanding the truth. And it's very important for Trinitarians and Christians looking in particular. Look, we're not here to smash your faith. We're here for you to realize the belief that God is a man is intrinsically incorrect. So please think about this. And I hope everyone benefits from this particular conversation.